Dear friends and fellow Singaporeans, increasingly we find the PAP lacking in ideas on how to overcome the serious challenges that confront our nation. The SDP is a constructive and responsible opposition. We are proud to have drawn up a set of alternative policies that will take our country forward. In this video, my colleagues and I will summarize them for you. For a solution to the problem of HDB values dropping towards the, the end of their 99-year lease, the SDP proposes the non-open market scheme, where new flats are priced at cost, charging for only construction plus admin, without the so-called land cost. This will halve the cost of flats and enable Singaporeans to buy a new flat without being financially overburdened and depleting our CPF savings in the process. At any point in time, non-open market flat owners who wishes to upgrade to other flat types are allowed to sell their flats back to the HDB, and any amount in unconsumed lease will be returned. Existing homeowners who bought their flats from HDB will be given the option to convert their flats into the non-open market scene, whereby the government will return the difference between the inflated purchase price and the non-open market price to their CPF account. The SDP proposes a retrenchment insurance scheme where retrenched workers receive a payout of three quarters of their last drawn salary for six months, half salary for the second six months if they are still unable to find a job, and one quarter in the last six months. During this time, the worker will have to work with MON to seek re-employment. We will also press the government to reverse the slew of price and tax hikes in recent months and pledge not to increase the GST after the next elections. As for our retirees, we will work to get the government to return the CPF funds at the age of 55. This promise was made to the people when the CPF scheme was started and should be honoured. Retirees need the funds for their day-to-day expenses. The SDP healthcare plan ensures that no Singaporean has to worry or go into debt because he is stricken with an illness. Under our plan, Singaporeans pay an average of $400 a year depending on their income levels. This amount, deducted from our CPS savings, is a fraction of what we currently pay into Medisave. Individuals who earn less than $800 a month or are unemployed or on social welfare will not be required to contribute. If a Singaporean is hospitalized, she only pays 10% of her total hospital bill, capped at $2,000 a year. To rely less on rote learning and exams and to foster creativity, we propose in our education policy that we scrap the PSLE and emphasize learning of independent thinking and analytical skills. Class sizes should also be reduced. We recommend, in line with best practices, a teacher-student ratio of 1 to 20. As for our universities, we advocate that students, especially those from lower income background, be given interest-free loans. The SDP will introduce Singaporeans first policy where foreigners who wish to work in Singapore enter a list if they meet strict qualifications and skill sets required in the relevant industries. Employers will then be required to demonstrate that they have exhausted all avenues of employing Singaporeans before they are allowed to hire foreign workers on the list. The SDP recommends that MPs allowance be 10 times the mean wage of the bottom 20th percentile. Ministers should be paid three times the MP allowance and the Prime Minister four times that amount. Based on our recommendations, the Prime Minister will likely be paid $56,000 a month and Minister $42,000. These wages are more than fair. Malays in Singapore continue to occupy the lowest sector of the economy. To reduce such income inequality, the SDP recommends the introduction of a minimum wage law. We also propose introducing a Fair Employment Act to minimize workplace discrimination against minority ethnic groups. The Ethnic Integration Program 
or EIP should be abolished as it restricts where ethnic minorities may live in HDB estates. This adversely affects the resale prices of their HDB flats. This is a brief overview of the alternative proposals that the SDP has drawn up. I encourage you to read up more about them by visiting our website at yoursdp.org or by clicking on the links in the comment section below. Until the next time, from all of us here at the SDP, take care and I hope to see you again soon.